Overall, I had a great experience on Survivor. You know, I made it to day 37. I didn't, I honestly didn't know if I would make it that far. I ended up doing better in challenges than I thought I would. I, you know, I pushed myself. I worked hard around camp. You know, looking back, I, I think I played a pretty honest game and I'm really proud of how far I came. You know, in retrospect, there's things I could have done. You know, I could have made maybe a big move somewhere in there if I could have got somebody else to go along. But, you know, overall, I really don't have any regrets. I did what I could. I tried to play as fair as I could. There's some challenges that I wish could have went my way, but a lot of it's luck, and it just comes down to, you know, what happens. You know, looking back, there was a time where I could have, you know, jumped on board with Matt and, you know, did like a Zapatera, went over to Zapatera, but. You know, I don't think I would have felt right doing that. I'm glad I stuck with Omotepe. That got me to six. Yeah, I was blindsided. That sucked. But I got to go to Redemption Island, which was, you know, one of my favorite things on the show as well. Got to got, come back into the game, still had a shot, and made it to number five. Like, I think that's a respectable game. Being blindsided was completely shocking. I came into Tribal Council being a little cocky. Like, Jeff asked me if I thought I was safe, and I pretty much said yes. I was so confident that I was safe because I, I trusted these people that I thought I was in alliance with, you know, typical survivor story. And then, bam, you're blindsided. But the cool thing about this season is Redemption Island. I got a second chance, and, you know, I got to beat three powerhouses in a duel and actually get back into the game. I had a huge transformation going into Redemption Island. I came in right off being blindsided. There was all this tension when I first got there with Matt and Ralph and Mike. And then I was emotional at my first duel. I ended up, you know, pulling it off. Got to spend a couple days on Redemption and really found some peace within myself. You know, I realized that, you know, what's gonna happen is what's gonna happen. You really can't worry so much. And then I came in to the final duel, probably the least favorite you know, with Grant, Matt, and Mike, and I beat them, like, easily. Like, it was a really, it was a highlight, you know, of my experience here, so I kind of proved to myself that maybe I'm a little tougher than I thought I was. I had a lot of ups and downs this season. Right away, I bonded with Matt, and then he was blindsided, and I had no control over that. I didn't know he was being blindsided, so I felt even blindsided, and then I felt like the fifth person and then I was really trying to like fight my way back into the game. So that was like a lot of lows there. But then I went through some highs. I got to go on some great rewards. You know, I got to eat on top of a volcano, fly over Nicaragua, eat pastries, you know, on Survivor. Like I got to do a lot of really cool rewards with Omotepe. And even sticking with Omotepe and, you know, accomplishing the fact that we were able to take out each Zapotera member and making it to the final six in the game. I mean, that was a highlight in and of itself. Personally, I learned that I am, you know, I am a strong person. I mean, I guess I, yeah, I always thought I was, but it was always kind of, you know, you, you come in and you want to prove something to yourself. And I came in thinking, okay, you know, I want to try really hard in these challenges and push myself, but yet I'm not exactly sure if I can. But, you know, in some of these challenges, I did. Like, I was right up there, especially with Rob and Grant in the stair climbing, the stair building challenge. Like, I was right up there. Like, I pushed myself. and winning the duel and then winning another immunity challenge. I kind of proved myself that I was a physical threat, whereas I didn't know if I would be considered one at all. People watching it at home probably don't realize how every day is so different and there's highs and lows within, within the day. Like you can go from being on top of the world, you have a great reward with these great people and then the next day you're like paranoid that these people are talking about you and you go ups and downs and ups and downs like every day it was a different story and you're always thinking and you're always playing and you you know you feel fake and sometimes you feel real but you don't know and your mind's playing tricks on you and it's a constant game mode the entire time I don't think people like really realize that it is mentally taxing and it is it's a struggle and it actually takes a lot out of you and you'll see glimpses of it but to actually go through it you kind of understand that it is a really tough game I was voted out twice and I do think that it was probably a smart decision to get rid of me both times because I was doing well in challenges. I feel like I was a pretty likable person and I worked hard around camp, which unfortunately in Survivor doesn't always ensure you a ride to the end. You know, you can see in the season, you know, there's maybe not the most deserving people in the end. So it's unfair, but this game is not a fair game. I don't really have any regrets. There are things that could have went differently. I didn't exactly love how I handled the Matt situation when he came back. I was actually pretty close to Matt and then 
you know, I lied to him. I, I blindsided him the second time and told him to his face that, you know, I had his back. But that's just kind of what happened, and it is a game, and I think he gets it. And, you know, he said he forgives me, and, like, we kind of made up. That I wasn't completely proud of, but it's a game. You need to do stuff like that. So, overall, I don't have any regrets. I think I might have been number six for a while on Almatepe. And maybe it wasn't crystal clear to them, but I think when the time came, they realized that of the people there, besides Grant, I was probably the biggest threat. So I think that I was just kind of oblivious to the fact that, you know, Rob and Grant, and they were all playing a completely strategic, money-hungry game. And even though Rob said he wanted to take deserving people with him to the finals, no, not at all. So I think that it wasn't always for sure, but I think when I got down to it, and when I started doing better in challenges, I think that you know, they needed to get me out.